welcome to the Hidden Driveway Show. I'm your host, Amu, and then joining me today, we have a very special guest, Mercy and Lowell, if you'd like to introduce yourself. What's good? Uh, I'm Gabe. Um, uh, I make music. Uh, I rap mostly, uh, but I also like make beats and shit. Uh, I'm making music. <laughs> I've been fucking with it since I was like a kid, kid, but I, like, I never really actually like kind of locked into it until like 2018. Uh, uh, I'm 19. Um, I have a stutter, so that might make this interview a little, you know, a little crazy. Well, I stutter too, so it'll be fun. Good. It'll be fun. Oh, it, it gets crazy. Like I, it, it might be smooth, but like I might do some like I, I, shit a few times. So just prep for that mentally. You no, know? That's fine. Like don't get cut off guard. Uh, I'm from uh, like upstate, like New York, like bum fuck upstate like you know it's pretty you know it's pretty dead up here besides college life i guess you know and that's kind of why like i locked into music i guess because i got nothing better to do you know yeah all right so to get us started is there anything that you'd like to talk about just is there, like anything on your mind right now oh uh, uh, i mean shit uh i got my first haircut in months in like an hour <clears throat> in like a 90 minutes maybe oh uh. So I'll be fine, you know. I should really, like, be new year really go with it. Shit. I don't know yet. I'm kind of just gonna like. I had it pretty short, uh, around like March last year. So I'm thinking I might go back to that, mm-hmm. to where I have like bangs up so, like here, and it's a bit more, you know. Yeah. Like poofy, cause it kind of like it, it does kind of curl up. Uh. But I don't know. Um. I have a fucked up like hairline. I got a way far back hairline. I'm not gonna show the hairline oh, yet. Is that what it's you're like the hairline gate. It's a whole yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a whole another uh, you know, whole another uh, lore bomb is you know the hairline. Mm-hmm. But save that for later, you know. Yeah, you one of the most unique sounding rap names I've heard in a while. So how did Mercy in the Well first come to be? Um, the name you said. Yeah. That's a good ass question. So, um. Uh, Okay, it's kind of cringe, arguably, but, like, fuck that. So, back in, like, Christmas 2020, uh, uh, this game com- this game came out, um, Omori, right? Um, it's, it, it blew up, like, it, it was already pretty popular, it had a lot of traction. Um, and, like, me and my, like, old best friend, we got, like, obsessed with it for some reason. There was a whole, like... I don't want to say like psychosis, but we had like some like delusions about it. It was it was crazy. It was weird. Um, and there's a portion of the game I won't like spoil it too much, but uh, it's called like the deep well, and that's when the game sort of takes a big shift like tonally, and so it's about sort of diving into like your deeper subconscious and all that, and into the shit that you don't really want to face. So like the well was always like s- some sort of imagery that I just had in my head. I was like I fuck with that. Um, and then as for the mercy part. Uh, a, I just like the name Mercy, but also uh, I feel like even if it's not super like direct, like a underlying guilt uh, from both like things I've done and just like kind of existing in a weird like I don't know way. Like I have a sort of guilt complex, I guess I don't know, and uh, that's where like the Mercy came from, I guess you know. So like you combine the two Mercy in the well, and it, it it just sticks out, you know. Like you see some shit like that, you're like. That's not a traditional name, you know? Yeah, I like how you capitalize it, too, because it's, like, that's really, like, specific to you, I think. Yeah, the census case. Um, I don't know why I started it. Um, you know, because, like, back in the day, I, I was, like, uh, I did, like, the all lowercase shit for a bit, and then I was doing, like, normal format song titles uh, way back in the day, pre-Mercy in the Will, because um, I thought that, like, that shit was kind of corny. But I just like the way it looked in sentence case, you know, mercy in the well, like it's like a sentence, it's like a statement, you know, instead of a alias sort of. Yeah. Yeah, I knew you liked it more, but I didn't know that it like came from that. I tried playing the game, I think like senior year, and I got half an hour into it, and then I just got bored because I'm like RPGs. No, valid, valid. No, it's there's a lot of flaws with the game, especially in terms of gameplay, uh, and it's you know. Going back to it, I feel like if I didn't have those, like, big memories with it, like, I wouldn't like it, like, being, like, you know, like, 19 now, being, like, you know, grown and shit, but, 
you know, still like a lot of themes in there that I fuck with a lot, uh, you know, uh, changed me as a person, which might sound stupid, but it was, it was a very big thing in my life mm -hmm. for a while, you know? Yeah. So before Mercy in the Low, though, you went by multiple different aliases, such as Gabe Curry and Lily Ann. So how would you say your sound yeah. shifted over yeah. time and what helped you land on where you're currently at today? <laughs> All right, so back in the gay can read era, it's that early shit. Um, I was fucking around uh, like with like textures and shit, cause I like that weird. I don't know. I was on that stupid like, okay, not stupid. I'm gonna diss people that are on this wave, like the band camp, like weird ambient noise shit, you know. Which I feel like a lot of artists, you know, uh, younger artists like especially like tend towards that, cause it's the first, you know. I don't want to say easy, but it's a uh, being younger, it's like a very potent way to do some self-expression type shit, I guess. Um, and I was just big on texture, you know what I'm saying? Like sampling and all that. Um, uh, I've always been big into sampling, like just even in like, I want to say 2016, just like I was like a kid playing with like Audacity or some shit, just trying to make some shit in Audacity. That was a crazy era. Um, but throughout that project, I tried to do, like, a variety of noises, you know, but it was always sort of, like, um, definitely, like, sort of, like, rhythm-centric and not really very, like, melodic and, like, good. <laughs> like, it wasn't, you know, it was just me fucking around. Um, and then I switched over to, like, rap beats and shit. I always kind of made rap beats. I just didn't really, like, release them. Uh, I had a beat tape that's lost. Um from earlier than any of the stuff that can still be found on the internet from like 2018 um but anyway uh i started making beats for a second and then uh a bit before quarantine right i was like i want to start rapping uh and then i switched over to you know annie you know uh i mean shout out annie you know like big ups uh she's dead r.i.p you know and uh, uh, I was going through some weird shit. I had, my, I had a whole little weird, like, internal arc, you know. Um, and I was just, I, I was on some fuck shit. Like, I was rapping about shit that I, I was not living. And I was just not, I was just in kid shit. Um, and I had a more, like, synthy, you know, I, like, I would, like a couple thousand plays and like some bullshit like that mm -hmm. um but i don't know i kind of you know I, I still felt like i was like misrepresenting myself and i felt like i wasn't really you know doing what i wanted to do and that's what you know like prompted the final alias change i guess mm -hmm. so you'd say now uh, you're um, like you feel more true to yourself sorry, you're making? oh yeah completely like 100 percent, 100 percent, because nowadays like i don't know like i didn't really have shit to rap about like even at the start of the mercy and the well shit like i didn't have too much shit to rap about so i just like my brutally honest shit we're just talking about like i don't know uh you know i guess i don't know how to word this um maladaptive sexual behaviors i guess i was like a you know like that's what like the first mercy in the well song was about you know shut out throw him in the well uh and, like, I just wanted to, you know, go mask off and just talk about shit that, you know, like, people don't really talk about. Mm -hmm. Now it's pretty commonplace, I feel like. E e even back then it sort of was, but it was new to me. Um, And then a bunch of shit happened, like, in my life to where now I actually have shit to rap about and, like, stories to tell and, like, real, you know. Like, I'll, like, I'll still, uh, you know, add a little extra details and, like, sort of, like, you know, all that shit. But I'm way more true to myself now. Most of what I talk about is either shit that I've, like, lived through or thought or something close to it, you know? Yes, that actually leads to my next question. So, life imitates art is a pretty, like, popular phrase, but your art usually imitates your life. So I was wondering, how does music act as an emotional outlet for you? Uh, damn, that's a good-ass question. So, back when I first started, like, this new alias, um... I felt like there was a lot of things in my life that I wasn't properly facing, you know, like, I guess. Um, and, like, using that as, like, that outlet, you know what I'm saying, helped me, uh, you know, 
digests and face shit that I was doing that I had changed that I wasn't really, you know, even though, like, I was talking about it in, like, therapy and shit, that I wasn't really, you know, actually genuinely, like, processing, I guess, and that really shit, you know. Even though I only had one song in, you know, like, in May, like, I made, like, quite a few songs. Like, there's a lost, like, EP that I might just, like, release as, like, a extra Lucy thing that helped me, uh, and just, like, shit like that. Um, and then as my music went on, um, closer to, like, you know, we'll say early 2022, um, the whole thing, like, uh, uh, like with my ex and shit, uh, it helped me, I don't know, it, it, in that period, it, it wasn't too much of an outlet still, it was, you know, it, it was a fun thing for a minute, um, I was talking about drugs, and I was kind of worried that I'd start having, like, a drug problem, and that was an aspect, but it, it didn't really become, like, a major outlet again, until we all left for college, you know, um, and since then, like a lot of my music has been, it's helped as an outlet and it's helped me to process things and all that. But a lot of it in a weird way has caused, um, like a feedback loop, like just like internally of like me thinking about the same shit and me writing about the same shit over and over, uh, just cause there's a lot of shit that's constantly like running through my yeah. mind. Like, um, and this might sound weird, but like, in a weird way, I like I feel like a lot of my lyrics, uh, the ones that aren't true end up like coming true anyway. So it's sort of like an inverse, like you know, like my life really is like sort of like imitating my art, even though my art's also like imitating my life. Uh, it's just weird give and take, you know. Like I'll just be rapping about some bullshit, you know. I mean, take mercy back. I'll just be rapping about some bullshit that I didn't know anything about. And then, like, the entirety of that song just happened. And I was like, oh, okay. You know. Um, that's about it, I guess. Mm -hmm. You have a song called Learning the Alphabet, which begs the question, mm. what's your favorite letter and why? It's a good-ass question. Oh, my favorite letter. Ooh. I kind of want to say, you know, something still... Like, you know, like S or X, you know, like just some sort of sibilant S, X, T, you know what I'm saying? Probably S is a good letter. It's kind of a cop out, I feel like. <laughs> I don't know why. What? But, I, you know, S has a, you know, it has this, uh, has this impact to it, this bite, you know? And there's a lot of cool work, you know, like serpentine, you know, snake, uh, sanguine, you know, like just a lot of badass words start with S. And it looks cool because it curves. It's exactly. like the only curvy letter, I think. Yeah, facts. Damn, I I didn't think about it like that. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, my so my acronym starts with an S. It's always fun to like just like write it down. I so feel like my handwriting's not that yeah, good. But no. People can always tell when it's an S. Oh, my, my handwriting is fucked. Do not that uh, again. That's a whole nother like <laughs> gate. You know, there's, there's stutter gate, there's hairline gate, and then there's gonna be handwriting gate. That shit's horrible. It's so bad. And, I, and, like, I'm a shaky guy, just, like, passively, right? So, that does not help. Yeah, no, my E's are straight up just, like, lines. And I don't even mean to do it like that, but it's, like, if I'm writing really fast, just a straight, like, single line. <laughs> That's hard, though. That's hard. Recently, you've been making videos on your YouTube channel, which reminds me of a much simpler era for that platform. So, I was wondering, what were oh, some yeah. of your favorite YouTube channels when you were growing up? I was a girl enough. Uh, I like the nerdier shit as like a kid, you know, I like Vsauce, I like mm -hmm. the number file and like that shit, uh, you know, like the entry level like nerd shit, like nothing like, you know, too uh, thought provoking for just that shit, you know, because I was like into learning and science a lot as a kid, you know, science was a huge thing for me as a kid. Um, and then for like more like traditional, like just like entertainment. Um, when I was mad young, you know, like Ant Venom and like just like Scott is Minecraft for a second type shit. But I I I, I kind of grew out of that pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know like what creators I was watching on like it. You know, I mean like the Peanut Butter Gamer, like that that's shit. The when I was like mad young, you know. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. No facts. Shout out. Um, but, you know, then when I, t you know, like around like 15 and shit, you know, I was watching like, or like a bit older than that, I guess. I, I didn't watch like all that much YouTube after I like sort of like started growing up. But towards like the end of high school, Germo was big and like our like friend group, just like Germo bits and shit, like in like my real life friend group. Uh, like just Germo pretty much. Uh, and like some Northern Lion, like shout out Northern Lion, you know, he keeps it real. Uh, I like more like low key. Oh, Etho. I didn't mention Etho's Lab. I was big on Etho's Lab. I feel like Etho's Lab is when I realized like these loud motherfuckers just like screaming all the time at video games and calling it content is annoying. And I feel like that was important for me because I was a loud ass kid. And then I was like, you know, fucking Etho's Lab. Shout out Etho, you know. Uh, very, you know, very comforting, uh, like content creator for me to watch as a kid. Yeah, I thought it was funny that you brought up Vsauce because that's how I found out about swear words. Originally. Yeah, yeah, no, there <laughs> okay, was uh -huh, there was a video uh -huh, I saw video, and yeah. he just said all the swear words. In my head, I was like, okay, so I guess I won't say these ones then. My brother though, he <laughs> didn't he didn't know the same thing. There was a time when we were in the car. He was talking to me about, like, Terraria or something. And he was like, yeah. Mothra is such a pussy. And our, our mom got so mad. <laughs> he had to have been, like, 10. <laughs> but, I mean, like, fuck that thing. It's a dumbass gimmick how, like, how you need, like, the broken hero sword, even though, like, this, like, lunar eclipse only happens every fucking, like, 50 in game days or whatever shit. Fuck the, you know, he's right. Like, like that bitch is a <laughs> pussy. I don't, you know, fuck that shit. Yeah. You've been teasing your album, the infantilization of Blind Mercy Will, for two years now. It seems that your vision to the project has expanded quite a bit. So I was wondering, how have you gone about creating such a large piece of work? Since it's like 12 acts, 100 tracks total, I think your SoundCloud says. Um, so how have you gone about creating that, and what should listeners come to expect? So originally, like, I've had a bunch of different projects planned that didn't happen. Under the whole, under the whole like, Lonely End thing, I had a... Um, this one album that I kept delaying, uh, R Razor and, uh, and Lipstick. And that was like the first album that kept on not happening, right? And that's been a through line throughout me making music is me wanting to do an album and then not being fully like content with it. Um, and then I want to say like early March, 2022, you know, I was into John Fahey, you know, like, I mean, like, shout out John Fahey, my favorite, uh, guitarist ever, um, and he has this album, it's called the, uh, Transfiguration of Bon Jo Death, see, that was a stutter, that's a good example of the stutter, that little, you know what I'm saying, it, it, it's tough with proper nouns, I don't know why, mm -hmm. but, um, uh, like the name of that album always really captivated me because it's just it's just so like eye grabbing, you know. Uh, and Blind Joe Death, like I, I like I just love that shit. Um, so I kind of did like a spoof of that, you know, and like a big theme of my life. I feel like is, you know, always trying to get back to like earlier times and like easier times and shit. I think that's like just part of the human condition, you know. Like we're always trying to get back to something. Uh, like whether it's part of, like part of your life prior to some horrible event or just being a kid and having that innocence and shit you know and like the right term for that is probably uh regression but i didn't like hit as hard you know so i so i changed the name up a little bit mm -hmm. um and I, I had a sort of big vision for it at first like i wanted it to be 30 songs right and like three acts um and that's when I started doing, like, pills and shit. So I wanted to, like, the come up, uh, and then the down, and then the up, and then, like, the down, down. You know what I'm saying? And that sort of, that that kind of stuck, too, because the album, at the scale that it's at today, still has that sort of through line of, you know, ups and downs, ups and downs, you know? Uh, but each up gets more manic, and each down gets more, like, just, like, miserable, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just kept making beats and writing songs that you know i didn't know what to do with but then i realized they were all sort of like like i could make it all work and make it all like cohesive and there's so many sounds that i wanted to capture 
um, that I wouldn't be able to do even with 30 songs. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it, you know, in my head, I just kept like playing like with the idea of making this super long album. And then in like early 2023, I want to say, probably later than that, uh, it, it, it just kind of all clicked and I was like, you know, I could really go big with this, I guess. And that could have been a mistake in some ways because it's been such an arduous process mm-hmm. working on that shit. But I think once it's done, I feel like the product will be worth it and it'll be something that not yeah. many people are going to listen to front to back, which I've realized and that's cool. But I feel like for the people that do have the time to listen to the whole thing, it's going to be a very... You know, it's going to be the kind of album that, you know, it's going to sound like uh, self-sucking as fuck right here, but something that will be like a moment in your life, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, just because of the scale of it, you know, it's yeah. going to stick out in your mind, you know, and there's a lot that I have to say and shit. Yeah, do you um, expect someone to listen to it like all in one sitting? Because like, I don't know what the full length of it is. Like, do you think even like you can listen to quick. it like at once? Probably like like me probably most people not because pretty much like it's like eighty percent done like I, I have to do vocals for like a, a lot of tracks but but like all the songs are written and most of the beats are at least like mostly done you know what I'm saying it's just probably like four hours it's like a bit over four hours mm-hmm. um I feel like most people will not be able to listen to it in a whole period. Just because that's like, a, again, that's an arduous ask, task to listen to a whole fucking album. In front to back, I feel like not, I don't know if anyone's going to do that outside of me. You know, I mean, like, like maybe Porcelain, just because shout out Porcelain, like, you know, like the OG. I mean, like not the OG, I guess, because we met in like 2022, but like a real one, you yeah. know, big, uh, big supporter. And like, they get it, you know, like they just understand like type shit, so like maybe them um but i don't think it matters if you don't listen like just front to back i feel like if you pick up like just where you left off it'll still have that impact you yeah. know you shot your first Arab music video for your song personality disorder in boise idaho so i know you're a new york native so how was that trip for you so the trip is fucking lit um so uh so basically right uh Marietta Medicine, like, I, like, I've known them since, I want to say, like, fuck, like, I, like, I, I had a shot memory, but, like, mid-2018, I would say, like, it is when we got, like, close, um, or mid-2019, and, um, after a while, we were, like, we need to meet up, you know, because we both got each other, like, I don't want to say that I, you know, that we prompted each other to, like, to make music, but, like, uh, like music was and is, like, a big part of our friendship, and I feel like there's sort of a, sort of, like, symbiotic, like, you know, like, we both, uh, you know, like, help each other, like, create and grow and shit just as people, um, and, like, we just kind of, like, in a weird way, like, we definitely, like, evolved, like, together, you know, like, I mean, like, they had a big, like, impact on my life and shit, so, like, we had plans to meet up. Um, and then, I mean, like, Delcada, shout out, shout out Delcada. Um, I've been bumping him since, like, 2020, um, at least, I think 2020. Um, and I never thought that I would meet him. Like, I, like, I never thought that was in the realm of possibility type shit. Uh, um, and then we got uh, Light Beckons. Uh, cut out, like, the blood slide thing. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. (laughs) Um, so then, uh. Light Beckons, right? Uh, she was a big supporter of me back in like the Lonely Ann era type shit. And then I found her shit around like the Mercy and the Well Time period. And I was just like, this is crazy. Like, this is amazing. Um, and then like, and, and I'll kind of met and talked. And then eventually, like, early, mid 2023, just like, we were going to meet up in Jersey. And then that switched up. And then we went to Idaho. And Idaho was fantastic. Long ass flight. I had like three layovers. I was fucked up. It was, I got my money up. It's fine. 
but it was you know it was great there's this weird motherfucker that <laughs> that we stayed with for a minute that was just crashing at a uh uh at the crib he was weird fuck that guy he was you know he was a tweaker uh he was just some weirdo shit like just low-key predator like fuck him mm-hmm. but we kicked him out and like after that just the vibe was much better you know uh we're just walking around small um uh, fucking show was it uh my, my name is earl uh and now show but like we just drank and like you know we smoked a lot and uh did ketamine and coke and that was all fun that was lit my, my birthday was crazy uh so i was there for my 19th birthday right uh <laughs> and, like the plug pulled up right uh, and this is the like second time that we like caught from him uh, on that trip, uh, and also like we had like these two like people over that like uh, that like she knew, um, n- uh, like not the plug, sorry, but uh, so like we're all doing coke together, right? And then like somebody brings up like how it's my 19th birthday, and the plug got like shook for a second. He was like, "You're 19." <laughs> He's like, "I'm selling the kids, yo." <laughs> And that was crazy, but, but like it was fun as fuck. It, it, it was lit. Mm-hmm. Like we had a great time just talking and just like connecting and shit. It was it was mad fun. And I'm trying to meet them again soon because they're all gonna be in Jersey soon. Yeah. So I'm thinking I'm gonna be down in Jersey, you know, sometime soon. Wait, so how are you going to Idaho for the meetup? Just because like, is anyone from that area? Yeah, yeah. Uh, both um. Uh. L- Light beckons uh and Dakota uh like bo- both like were based like uh in Boise for a second mm-hmm. so like that just kind of like worked out like yeah. okay like let's just go there because they're both there you know like it it was gonna be Jersey uh but like we're like nah like you know like we'll just go to them so then uh I flew out from New York uh, and then um. Madison moved out, not moved out, uh, flew from, uh, Ohio, you know, and so it was pricey for both of us, but it was worth it, it was, you know, it was fun. You were speaking of this earlier, but everyone wants to remove times that they're nostalgic for, and your music is all but reflecting on the past. So if you had to go back and redo any year of your life, which one would you pick? Would I be able to see like like the butterfly like impact of that or whatever um and then choose which timeline i wanted to stay in <laughs> sure. you know because like, you know, if, if that's an option 2022 2022 100 percent because that's when i feel like i fucked up the most in terms of doing shit that prompted me to lose like a lot of friends you know like i guess like i both had a girlfriend and lost my girlfriend made a bunch of friends in college uh kind of fell out of touch with like half of them uh i lost my best friend just because of that year uh and just shut up hold um and you know i did a I, I did a lot of ecstasy in this one month and i feel like that fucked up my head low-key i would take that back i would probably focus on my grades more um and i would just i would just be a better person you know i was i was not a very you know I was trapped in this sort of, like, I was scared that I was, like, a sociopath, and I was just, like, very mentally unwell, and I was doing shit that did not help that, you know, I was doing shit that just, like, amplified it, mm-hmm. um, so I would definitely redo that year, but I also had a lot of good memories, just, like, with my ex and shit, and, and, and we all went on this trip, and that was super fun, and college was great, but still 2022, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I figured you'd probably say. I, I figured yeah, I'd ask yeah, anyway. Yeah. No, valid, valid. Okay. I beat Pastoria in the last episode, and I'd like to continue my streak. Can we play rock, paper, scissors? Okay, okay, okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. That's two out of three. All right. Rock. Rock. Paper. Paper. Sweet so the way. Scissors. scissors. <laughs> Shoot. Shoot. All right. Oh. oh I think I've done that every time. Okay, man. I lost the first one. Woo! Okay, but okay. I guess I'll come back. Oh. Uh, I'll just like close my eyes so that I can't cheat like with the delay which I like I, I didn't cheat but I'll, I'll just yeah. close my eyes for okay. it and then I'll open them okay you ready rock rock paper paper scissors scissors shoot shoot 
Look at me tied. Okay, tied, tied. Okay, okay. Rock. All right. Paper. paper. Scissors. Scissors. Shoot. Shoot. God damn. Oh, tied. God okay, damn. Okay, okay. okay. So okay, this is the okay. one that really matters. Okay, okay. It's high stakes. Okay. Rock. Rock. Paper. Paper. Scissors. Scissors. Shoot. Shoot. Ooh, oh, you pulled that strategy? Ooh, that's oh, tough. Man. That is tough. That is tough. Hit right. him with the three P. You know ooh. what this means, though? They never expected. Americans are still on top because no Europeans have won yet. Yeah. Checks out. All Checks right. out. Yeah. God bless America. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, so I'm currently, I'm currently one to two for, for wins. Next time they'll okay, come valid, back. Valid. No, I listen. You know, I mean, like we get knocked down and then we rally and we come back. Mm -hmm. I believe in you. I think you got this. You know, next time, you know, and I won't be that shook if you lose. I'll be like pretty disappointed. You know, I might not talk to you for a few weeks, yeah. but you know, I think you got this. I think you got this. Yeah, my first week of college, like everyone that I met, I'd play rock paper scissors. I had like a ten person streak going for a while, and then. Oh shit, so I was like your icebreaker was like, yo, I got a 10 person rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, no, I would just do that because it's like, who's not going to want to try to beat me? Um, but eventually, <laughs> I had to go to some assembly thing for one of my classes, like some lecture. It wasn't like a lecture yeah. for in class, though, it was a separate thing. But I sat down, I sat down with some like random guy. Uh, he was clearly not in a good mood, so I probably shouldn't have tried talking to him anyway. But <laughs> I tried playing against him, and then I lost, and I was just like, damn. So, See, that's the thing. Like, you got to clock your targets, you know what I'm saying? Like, just clock, like, who's the kind of person that would lose that rock, paper, scissors? And you got to really, like, you know, and then go from there. So, like, I mean, like, if the homie, like, was in a bad mood, like, he's ready to, you know, rock some ass. So, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a misplay, but I get it. I get yeah, it, you know. Yeah, so next time I'll, I'll, I'll be more conscious of who I try to play against. Valid, valid. All right. Your song, Golden Ratio, is produced by Porcelain and Jano. And I know you have a lot mm -hmm. of stuff with porcelain in the vault, so I was wondering yeah. how did y'all start working together? So, yeah, around like mid twenty twenty two, like we started chatting, and, and and we realized how much we had in common, just with like life experiences, you know, shared like just bad shit that like formed us type shit, you know, uh, and like I mean like they got it tough, you know, and um, we just connected on like so much shit that like we were like we need to start like making shit together because we're on like the same wavelength so much shit uh and then after college like especially we got you know way more tight after i dropped out in you know may 2023 like we got way more tight we were talking all the time um and they're just so talented like they're such a talented like interesting producer and shit um and i feel like like the type of shit that like i have to say in my in like my energy you know, fits very well over like their like production style and shit um and we just really i mean like it just clicked you know what i'm saying like our our music has a lot of shared themes and our you know our goals for what we want to say are similar so like we were just like fuck it like let's make a tape yeah and that's still like a work in progress i i've I been had like a broken laptop for a minute now and Amazon sent me the wrong one twice. Uh -huh. I don't know how the fuck that happens. That's crazy. That's crazy. Another product the wrong model. You. Like, no, I'm dead ass. There's some conspiracy or something. I pissed somebody. I pissed somebody off, and who, who's in power? You know what I'm saying? Like somebody's at my neck. I don't know what happened, but yeah. After the laptop, and after I'm finished with you know fucking blind mercy, well, which will happen, on on God, on my mom, that album will be finished. Um, after that, uh, you know, it's going to be like, uh, our tape, you know, uh, like me and porcelain and it's going to, it's going to go hard. It's, it's going to be crazy. Cause I'm like their production is so lot. crazy. Yeah, like I've noticed this 2021 it's be... and it's just like insane how much he's like evolved over that like short period of oh, time. Completely, completely. Just like they have such a. Uh, they have a very like exp like I like their uh, like their whole sampling shit like it's sort of like vapor like I mean like they're very inspired uh, uh, by like vaporwave and shit you know um, and I feel like they took that which I don't really fuck with like that but made it you know did like this just cool ass shit with it in terms of like 
uh, them sort of mixing like their own like guitar with samples and making it this whole sound collage type shit, but not in a stupid like you know normal like Bandcamp kid way and actually like artistic like valid like self expression and all that and like I love that shit. Like they definitely evolved so much and you know uh, their beats go crazy. So uh, I'm very excited for that. Mm. Yeah, me too. You saw Cookies Cream in college talks about your anxiety when you start in college and entering a new stage of your life. So if that song is going to become two years old this year. So I'm just wondering, how do you say your life has changed since then? So in that song, I talk about how I'm scared that I'm going to really stagnate in college and not be doing shit, you know, not make any memories, just be lounging around, smoking weed and just doing my homework and shit. Um, and that is very much not what happened, you know, like <laughs> those lines about, you know, uh kind of like losing my friends and shit that did low-key happen but i made so many more friends and i was like mobbing out and shit i was always doing shit i was never doing my homework or my class shit but i was always with somebody at a bunch of different circles i was hanging with it was very eventful and that again like i feel like that song like that ending like the whole break chord thing i made first time i did any shit like that last time i've done it um it was supposed to be like a more like uplifting like me hoping that i'd be able to you know blend in well and uh get to live like a crazy little you know like go, just going hard you know and like partying and shit and that happened and it was great um and then you know after i dropped out and shit you know the part you know i don't really drink like i i don't like drinking enough to like just like drink by myself i'm not on that shit but like the sentiment of that line you know rings true like i've been like on my solo shit um for a while now you know like almost a year like you know i'll still hang out like with people sometimes but mostly i've been pretty isolated uh just because i burned a lot of bridges towards the end of the semester um and i just lost contact with some people uh so that's not like it, again that song did sort of i feel like, like like in a weird way manifest like you know what would happen in my life you know because mm -hmm. I, I was going hard for a minute and then i burned out you know and I sort of crashed out. And now I'm just, you know, I'll be reading. I'll be writing. I've been playing some guitar lately. I work on music. I work like 38 hours a week. I have a new gig lined up, and that should be cool. Um, But, you know, I'm living that lonely, like, 19-year-old college dropout life. You know, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, do you have any advice for people that might be going into college like this following year? Yeah, actually, like a lot. Yeah, um, do not be afraid. Just put yourself out there, okay? Because college is like your chance to like reinvent yourself, and it's not on some high school shit where it's super clicky and, and none of that. You just need to fucking like get out there. Cause I became friends with so many people that I never thought I'd be friends with. You know, like these preppy rich ass girls. You know, I mean, like shout out them uh all the stoners and shit um all like the city kids and all that you know uh all like the smash bros like nerd type kids i, I like I, I wasn't tight with them like that but you know that was like the first group i sort of for like a few weeks you know till i met people that i fuck with more like but then, like you can make it work with like any kind of person you know if you're just cool and you you know like know how to have fun and sort of code switch a little bit so that's a big thing but also like don't overindulge you know, because it is easy, especially if you have a lot of different social circles, so you don't really have any downtime. You know, don't overindulge and always having a social life and always drinking every chance you can and, you know, wasting all your money on drugs and shit. Um, like, lock in and, like, actually do your school shit. It's not that hard. I just have executive functioning issues <laughs> and poor self, you know, uh, self-control. And I was just heating this sick as fuck. Or just do your school shit. At least in freshman year, it's not going to be that hard. Like, it definitely gets more difficult, I'm 100% sure. Um, but if you just lock in, you know, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Just don't let your vices, like, take hold, you know. But also, don't don't be a square, you know. Like, like don't just sit in your room all day, you know, because college is your chance to make a lot of memories. And I definitely made a lot of memories. And you got to take advantage of that, you know, because... I feel like a dorm type situation. Oh yeah, dorm. 
is, is my advice. I know that financially it's not always the best choice, but dorm. Because there's no experience like living in the same space as so many people like that you fuck with. You know, like I fuck with most of my floor and it was crazy because all the time I'd be hanging out with people. I'd wake up, I'd hang out with people. We'd hang out all day. I would go to bed, you know, and we wouldn't stop hanging out until right when we went to bed, you know, we were always doing shit. And that's, I feel like that's humans are like, like that's how humans are supposed to live in a more like, you know, not like a commune, I guess, but a commune, you know, like a group of people all living in the same space, sharing that shit. It's so much more like fulfilling than the stupid ass, like just like, you know, oh, you know, white pig offense, you know, my homestead, like I own my land, you know, this is my property, like fuck that shit, you know. I feel like people are supposed to be closer than that. Mm -hmm. And college is great for that. So, yeah, that's my tangent about college, I guess. You're definitely right about the not like going all in on the social stuff because I think my first two months of college, so I have a really big friend group and they're constantly doing stuff. And I always got my work done, but it would always be super last minute. I'd be stressing about it. I don't know, one mm-hmm. time we had, like, a movie night. And I had to stop halfway through the movie to, like, do my homework. And oh, I've, just, I've not done that shit. <laughs> it's just, like, you gotta just stay on top of it, for sure. But as mm-hmm. long as you put yourself out there, I think you can definitely find, like, your group. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And if, if it's not, like, it, it took me, like, a couple different, you know, I guess one different, like, group of people that, you know like that they like that, that, like they fuck with me and they sort of took me in but you know I, I don't really fuck with them like that but like you can you know you can hang with so many different fucking people there's so many people that i would in high school i would never dream that i would have stuff in common with but you know you can find it in almost anybody you know even you know like the fuck boy frat kids you know um you know uh, i mean like um this is gonna sound fucked up, but I mean, I mean, like the gay kids and all that, you know. I mean, like I'm bi, like you know, like shout out the gays, but like I mean, like, um, I had a gay roommate, um, and like his friend circle was pretty lit, and and that was awesome, you know. It was fun hanging out with all them, uh, you know, uh, like the like tweaker girls, low key. That was, you know, that was fun. There's so many different groups of people that you can meet and find stuff in common with. Is my point, you know. Like, don't box yourself in and don't, you know, even if you find people that you fuck with, don't, like, rely on them too much, mm-hmm. you know. As the episode comes to a close, is there anyone or anything that you want to give a shout out to? Um, I'll give a shout out to you. Thanks for doing this, like, you know, I mean, this whole thing and just, like, you know, sort of, like, gas me up in general and just, like, making crazy, you know, beats. Like, you're a good-ass producer. Thank you. Um, And uh, it was dope to see you sort of flourish, like in college type shit you know because i know i mean like in that little group chat that we have right you know i know that there's a grab bag of different college experiences there um well i'm glad that you're sort of thriving and you got your click and all that you know and there's like ups and downs but i like i'm just glad that you got friends that's lit um shout out uh i mean like young rat poison you know like real one uh shout out porcelain again uh, shout out Marietta Medicine, shout out Dalcada. I mean, shout out Moody Blues. Um, we haven't worked yet, but like we've been planning on it. Um, uh, shout out, I'm gonna say Mother Suo, uh, for like back in like the Lonely Ann days, really like supporting me because I, you know, I loved his music. We don't talk much nowadays. Uh, I was on some like just like insecure shit one time, and I just said some like weird shit, like some weird, I don't know, I was bugging. Uh, but like he showed his friends my music and this one guy got so fucking tight I, I he was on like just like some like some bitch shit and then he texts me on on soundcloud he's like stop making music about your problems <laughs> dopamine hits or whatever i'm like fuck are you talking about bro uh but i mean shout out him for being my first hater um that's you know you're shout up, out though. my mom huh yeah facts exactly facts um shout out my mom uh and my dad He's technically my stepdad, but he's my dad, mm-hmm. you know, like for just being supportive. I won't show them my music because I talk about some crazy shit in my music. But just shout out them for being supportive, you know, that's real. Um, shout out my old friends, you know, uh, I won't name drop them, but for, you know, again, just, you know, being there for me and also all being so tight when I first started like creating. Uh, and all my college friends, uh, I mean, Julio for, like, getting me into freestyling. Shout out Julio. We don't talk too much anymore, but shout out him. Jonas for still sticking with me. 
Um, and yeah, just anybody that I've met through music, pretty much. Like, shout out to you, you know. Uh, um, like beckons too. Um, I almost just like didn't say anything because like her alias switch. Um, but like shout out her. She she's real as fuck. Uh, uh, and Jack too. Uh, you know, for being you know like. Cause like these are people whose like music I liked prior to meeting them and meeting them was fantastic and them just supporting me and you know just fucking with the message you know that's big. And I don't know I mean that's not it you know I mean like shout out uh, Alice and Moss uh, they're also like an OG sort of. Um you know she uh, you know I met her a bit after uh, you know like late 2018 I feel like we started like you know getting to know each other and shit like or not not 2018 late 2019 um you know, shout out her shout out all those people from that click you know from like the me and medicine click shout out all them uh and shout out like marietta medicine like the og like big ups and that's not all but that's all i can think of right now off top but if if somebody sees this that i fuck with and i didn't shout them out shout out you you know what i'm saying uh and amber amber's my co-worker uh <laughs> He's like 35 or some shit, and like she has a kid, but she just gets it, you know. Like we just start talking about like deep shit out of nowhere for some reason. Like she just understands, uh, and like and 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 like she peeped my music, just cause like she kept asking about it, and I was like fuck it, uh, and I and the one song I didn't want her to hear was fake, and that was the first song she found, but she was like I fuck with this, this is that raw real shit, and I was like valid, um, cause like she's been through it, so she gets mm-hmm. the struggle. But, like, shout out her for being one of the real-life people. <laughs> like, to be like, you know, you actually kind of got something going here, you know? That's that's real as fuck. Shout out Mercy the Well for coming on today. This has been the Hidden Driveway Show. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you had a good time. I hope you, the listener, had a good time. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I was going to say deuces. Uh, and, like, keep it real, you know? Uh, if you make music... Stay on that real shit, you know, like, don't, don't be scared to talk about, like, what you want to talk about. Just go mask off, you know what I'm saying? Go, you know. Yeah, okay. That's my outro statement. <laughs> okay. Keep it real. Keep it real. <laughs> All right. See you. Bye.